Have you ever wondered what style of meat can transform your tasting experience? Today I'm diving into the secrets of mead styles. Uncork the secrets of mead and let's explore the world of honey wine together. Stick around because this knowledge could elevate your mead game. And don't forget to share your favorite mead style in the comments below. So let's jump right in. Mead comes in various styles, each with unique characteristics and ingredients. Before we dive into them, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And as a thank you, grab my free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily, using the link in the description or the pinned comment. First up, Acerglin, a unique mead that combines honey sweetness with maple syrup's depth, reminiscent of your favorite pancake toppings turned into a tasty beverage. I remember the first time I tried an Acer Glen. It was during a snowy winter, and the warmth of the mead combined with the rich maple flavor made it feel like a cozy breakfast by the fire. Acer Glen can be tricky to balance because maple syrup can overpower the honey, so it's important to find the right ratio. I usually start with about a 70 to 30 split, favoring the honey, and adjust from there. Next, black mead. A black mead is a darker, more intriguing version of mead. Enhanced with herb for depth or berries for a mix of sweet and sour, making it stand out from regular mead. One thing I love about black mead is its versatility. You can make it with different berries to suit your taste. I found that using a mix of blackberries and elderberries gives it a nice complexity. And here's a tip. Let it age for at least six months to really allow the depth of flavors to develop. Patience is the key with this one. Boucher. This mead takes honey and transforms it by caramelizing, turning it golden and rich before fermenting, resulting in a mead with deep, smoky sweetness. When making a boucher, you'll want to caramelize the honey just right. Too little, and you won't get that rich, toasty flavor. Too much, and it becomes bitter. I recommend caramelizing the honey until it reaches a deep amber color, usually around 10 to 15 minutes on medium heat. Stir constantly to avoid hot spots, and be mindful not to overdo it, as excessive caramelization can introduce an inky or blood-like quality to your mead. If you want to avoid this, stick to a medium-low heat and monitor the honey closely. Also, using a high-quality light honey can help maintain a balanced flavor. And here's a tip. Add a pinch of sea salt during the caramelization process. It enhances the sweetness and adds an extra layer of flavor. Next up, Bocheo Mill, a mead that you first cook the honey until it's nice and caramelized. After that, you add fruits and berries. This process gives Bochamel a sweet base with a burst of fruity taste. I like to use a blend of raspberries and blueberries as their tartness contrasts beautifully with the caramelized honey. Use a small amount of star anise during fermentation. And for a more adventurous take, it gives the Bochamel a subtle spiced undertone with, that's absolutely delightful. Next up, one of my favorites, Braggot which is a festive blend of mead and beer, where honey and malted grains come together, offering a mix of mead sweetness and beer's richness. This combination can have varying flavors and alcohol strengths, appealing to enthusiasts of both beverages. If you're a fan of craft beer, you'll likely appreciate the depth that Braggot brings to the table. The choice of malt is crucial here, I like using a lighter Pilsner malt for a more balanced flavor. What kind of malt do you prefer in your braggot? Let me know in the comments. Next up, Capsimil. Well, a mead that packs a punch with the addition of chili peppers, creating a sweet yet spicy experience perfect for those who enjoy a bit of heat in their drink. If you like it hot, experiment with different chili varieties to find your perfect balance. I've tried everything from jalapenos for a mild kick to habaneros for a fiery burst. One tip. Infuse the peppers in the mead for only a few days and taste it regularly. Capsimel can go from pleasantly spicy to unbearably hot faster than you think. Cushen. It's a unique type of mead from Brittany, France, famous for its rich flavor thanks to buckwheat honey. Unlike other meads that may use different types of honey, Cushen proudly uses local Brittany honey, giving it a taste that's all its own. It's also made with a special yeast, kind of like what's used in beer, adding to its distinct taste. The modern version of Koshen is a bit different from the old ones. It doesn't contain bee venom. It has a lower alcohol content, around 10%, making it smoother to drink. If you can get your hands on buckwheat honey, give Koshen a try. It's a taste of French history in a glass. One of my favorites, Sizers. 
The result of marrying apple cider with mead, producing a sweet apple rich beverage ideal for fall or whenever you're in the mood for something warm and inviting. I use a hydrometer to ensure the perfect balance in my sizer. It really brings out the apple flavor. For an extra autumn twist, consider adding a cinnamon stick or a few cloves during fermentation. What's your favorite fall spice to add to sizer? Share your tips in the comments. Another favorite, melamel. Fruit flavor means that can use any fruit from berries to orchard or tropical fruits. Each type influencing the drink's taste, smell, and color in significant ways. Melamel is all about creativity. There are endless combinations to explore. One of my favorites is a peach and basil melamel, where the sweet peaches and the aromatic basil complement each other perfectly. A tip, try freezing the fruit before adding it to the must. It helps break down the cell walls and extract more flavor. Another great one is the methaglen, herb and spice flavored meads with methaglen coming from the Welsh word meaning medicine, reflecting its ancient use. Ingredients like cloves, cinnamon, or vanilla add complex flavors. Methaglen is where you can let your inner herbalist shine. I've experimented with lavender, rosemary, and even ginger. Each herb brings something unique to the table, so don't be afraid to try new combinations. A trick I've learned is to add the spices and stages during fermentation to layer the flavors more effectively. Next up, Oxymel, a combination of mead and vinegar, creating an unexpectedly refreshing drink with a sweet yet tart profile, similar to a liquid sweet and sour candy. Oxymel is an historical drink that's making a comeback, and for good reason. It's incredibly refreshing, especially when served over ice. For a more modern twist, try adding a splash of seltzer water to your Oxymel. It turns it into a delightful mead spritzer. Next up, another favorite of mine, Pimens, a melamel variant made with fermenting grapes with honey, merging mead with wine qualities. Depending on the grapes, it can range from light to dark, adapting wine's versatility. Pimen is perfect for wine lovers who want to try something new. Whether you prefer dry red or sweet white, there's a Pimen recipe out there for you. A little tip, choose grape varieties that are already high in sugar content like Muscat or Zinfandel, for a more robust final product. Next up, Tej, an Ethiopian mead, distinct for including bitter leaves, balancing sweetness for a rich flavor profile. Tej has a special place in my heart. It's one of the first international meads I ever tried, and the balance of flavors was unlike anything I experienced before. Tella, though sometimes likened to beer, Tella is closer to mead made from various grains and offering a peek into ancient Ethiopian brewing practices. Tella is fascinating because it gives us a glimpse into the ancient brewing traditions of Ethiopia. If you're interested in the history of brewing, Tella is a great place to start. Next up, my go-to staple, traditional mead. Traditional mead, often referred to as show mead, is mead in its simplest form, focusing solely on honey, water, and yeast. It emphasizes honey's varietal character and flavor without additional fruits, spices, or grains. Traditional meat is where it all begins, pure, unadulterated honey. I like to experiment with different honey varieties, like wildflower or orange blossom, to see how they influence the final product. So if you're new to mead making, starting with a traditional mead is a great way to understand the basics. Check out my mead making series. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And as a thank you, grab my free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily, using the link in the description or the pinned comment. Check over here for more mead videos.